Hey, what's up? This is Aaron Holstein. Let's talk about starting tracks. Getting started can be easy. Getting started can be really frustrating. If you have some sounds to play with that you already like, then it starts off easier. I strongly suggest that you divide your studio time into two distinct types of sessions. One, where you're the librarian and you're making sounds or you're collecting sounds. So create a folder in your library called Use Me and copy good sounds into that folder. One way of doing this is to browse through the samples that you have on your hard drive. There are numerous programs for doing this, Explorer, Finder, but if you're on Windows, I would suggest checking out, and these guys aren't paying me or anything, the Lubic, Lycube, I'll, I'll look it up. If I feel pressure to make a track, let's say I have a gig coming up this weekend and I need a new track and it needs to be great, then that pressure will inhibit my flow in terms of creativity. Sometimes you aren't feeling super creative, but you want to work on some music. That's the best time to be a librarian or a sound designer, sound creator. As you browse your hard drive for samples that you want to use, you take the goodies and you put them in your Use Me folder. So you end up with a folder full of great sounds that you want to use and presets for the synths that you like to use. Put a little work in to customize the presets that you like and save them into this folder so that when you come into the studio feeling creative, you can dive right in to a folder that's full of great sounds. You're not wasting time spinning gears on tangents looking for sounds in a huge cluttered mess of files. You have a folder that you know is ready to go full of good stuff. You've got a drum of every type, five kick drums, five snare drums, some claps, some hi-hats, some cymbals, some bass sounds, keyboard sounds, some synth presets, all in this folder that you call Use Me. So that when you're ready next time to make a track, you can just it's like a chef about to cook a huge dinner. And that work is sort of like the prep cooking. So then you can just get to work. You don't have to stop to cut the vegetables and to like do all the little side things. You can just get to making the song. Gives you a shortcut head start right to that fun production feeling. It's more fun. You can quickly just load up the goods. You don't have to spend any of that time on those tangents looking for new sounds or making new sounds while you should be basically composing and arranging. If you're unfettered during the composing and arranging process, you are gonna come up with some really great stuff and you're gonna move forward and it's gonna be a quicker process to the finish. Make sure to collect all different kinds of elements, drums, percussion, deep sounds, mid-rangey sounds, high-pitched sounds, melody sounds, sound effects, vocals, whatever you like to work with so that when you're ready to go, you really don't have to spend any extra time looking for that stuff. Go the extra distance and make presets in your workstation. If it's Ableton, then you wanna make some racks full of samplers, samplers, containing the sounds that you've collected, maybe with some effects on them, ready to go. Save those back into your Ableton library. So then you've got all kinds of tools you can just drag into your Ableton project. In a previous video, I talked about finishing tracks. And in that video, I suggested going through a cluttered but hopeful track composition and deleting some of the extra material, but saving it somewhere so that you could reuse it. Now would be a good time to go through some of that stuff and to pull some of the best of that material into your Use Me folder for your next project. I suggest you work as fast as you can in the beginning of the project and don't second guess yourself and move forward. When you start a song, make sure that you commit to a whole arrangement in the first session. That's gonna set some boundaries. Even if you don't have a lot of time, make sure you've copied out uh, some structure so you've got four minutes of tune. Maybe work on a section if you know you like it, copy it a few times, bracket that with an introduction and an outro, make a spot for a change, and then you can save the whole project and you already have a tune structure. 
One thing I find really frustrating is if I've just started and I get locked into just the first eight bars and I can't move any further than that. So it's really important to set your goal on a whole tune structure. Even if you don't have time, your first go at it to finish the tune, get it laid out in terms of timeline. Give your tune a beginning, middle, and end. One time I made a track with one of my friends, Dylan, who goes by Ill Gates. He's really organized and he makes a ton of music. I was looking forward to making a track with him and the backstory is just that it was my birthday. We had gone to see Tool the night before at Red Rocks. He crashed at our house and we went to breakfast and discussed making a track together that day. Right away he said, what key, what tempo? What do you need in your set? So when we got back from breakfast and went down to my studio, I set up a project in the key and the tempo that we had decided on. That tune was called The Fireman. I had already thought up the vocal, so I quickly recorded that. I'm the fireman. And created a beat, a bass line, and some parts while Dylan made sound effects that were all in the key that we had chosen and in the tempo that we had chosen. <laughs> and we'd put those on a thumb drive and shuttle it over to me and I would drop them into the track. So the ear candy and all of the timed sound effects were being made simultaneously while I was constructing the basic structure of the tune. Then we added a few more things, we saved it, he had to leave. A few days later, he sent me back some notes. It was very specific. I tend to be a little more sloppy and try to feel stuff out, and I was really impressed with how Dylan was so organized. At measure four, cut something. At measure 16, cut something. At measure, you know, blah, 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 copy and paste this section. So I did those things. I added a few more of my ideas to it, sent it to him. He checked it out, sent it back to me. That song came together really quickly. And I learned a lot from working with Dylan about being organized and intentional and starting the song with as many decisions made as you can make. Give yourself some limitations like, I'm only gonna use eight channels. I'm only gonna use four sounds. I'm only gonna work for one hour. The best two minute song in the world. Those type of self-imposed limitations will give you something concrete to work on. You'll work faster. You'll get at it quicker and get it done faster. There's one thing that a lot of producers do differently, and that is starting with drums or starting with music. Do you start with a groove and add a beat to it once the groove is built? Do you start with a beat that's really solid and add musical parts to that? I think most of the Vibe Squad material that I made was beats first. And really, I think at this point, looking back, that's kind of backwards for how I would work moving forward. In some ways, if you start with a beat, you work yourself into a corner, whereas the beat itself dictates everything else that's happening. The beat comes first, you know. I would say a strong argument for starting with musical ideas first and adding the beat after is that if you start with the beat and you add some musical ideas to that, it might sound really good together. If you drop the beat out, there's no guaranteeing that those musical ideas will sound okay on their own. They might be missing just those accents that the beat was providing. If you start with the musical ideas and get those to really happen just all on their own and then add a great beat to that, then if you take away the beat, you still have this great musical phrase happening, these great musical ideas happening. If you add the beat back, it still works. So I think that is an argument to starting with a musical ideas first and adding a beat afterwards. But I have found sometimes for my own working that I'll get myself to a place where I can't add the right beat. Like beats aren't working to a musical idea that I built. Like I build a musical idea and it ends up being difficult to figure out what drums to use. I still think though, starting with a really good solid musical phrase and adding a beat to that means that you'll have what you need when it drops out. You won't have to do a lot of work to give foundation to the musical idea when you take away the beat. When you're just getting started, it's a really good idea to just copy the stuff you like. 
originality is the ultimate goal, but you want to get comfortable with the tools. So copying a few tracks that you think are great is a good way to learn the ins and outs of the software you're trying to master, the ins and outs of the music creation process. So if there's a song that really inspires you, a great exercise is to try to clone the energy, the feeling of that tune. Go ahead and copy that tune's key, copy that tune's tempo. Go ahead and try to match the feeling that they have. Listen to what's happening. Why does it feel that way? Is there percussion? What's it doing? What are the parts doing? How they're interacting? And try to create your stuff to be just like that. Now go ahead and try to mimic the whole tune. When I've done this exercise in the past, I've come up with tunes that were completely different than the source material I was copying. Because halfway through I got inspired or something happened or I wasn't able to make it sound like that at all, but I did like what I started to come up with and I took that somewhere. I'm going to make another video about field sampling, but just for now, no, by recording some real world sounds on your phone, pulling them into a rack in Ableton or a sampler and adding some effects can be an amazing way to start a tune. On your way to the studio, record some street noises, record the train, record your car, record something interesting. If you go to the hardware store, there's a million amazing sounds to collect there. If you're somewhere that has a lot of echo, like a parking garage, make a noise and record it. You'll have a connection with this sound because you made it, and it will be fun to create a tune out of that. Sometimes it can be really hard to name songs. You'll come up with them while making breakfast, but when you're in the studio and it's time to title your song, it's impossible to remember. I say, title your tune right off the bat. If you've made a long list of names that you like, then you have a lot to choose from. I have a notepad on my phone that's dedicated to song titles. It's called Song Titles, and I put good song titles in there. And as they come to me, I can just open that page, click the little microphone, say the song title into my phone, so that when it's time to really name a track, you're not sitting there just coming up with names from scratch. It's handy. Pick a title that matches your mood or the tempo or key that you've chosen. Commit to that and move forward. You can always change the name, but if you name something up front, you're already thinking about a finished song. Naming the song up front sets your whole project in motion. Same goes for vocals. Just record all the ideas you have into your phone. Have a shortcut to a sound recorder on your phone and press record and sing, rap, beatbox, say, vocalize your idea so that you can come back to it later. If you get comfortable with this, you could just sample that. You could be making your own little vocal breaks. If you're not a singer or vocalist per se, you can still use your own voice very effectively in your music. Shouts and little sounds. <laughs> just, just go, oh, yeah, Ooh, okay, into your phone. As silly as that sounds. And then chop that up in Ableton, put that in a sampler, across the keys, add a little bit of effects, and add that in as an accent. Just an idea. You come up with your own. There's no accounting for musical taste. So do your own thing. If you have a title, tempo, key, and a folder full of sounds, and you give yourself a couple of hours, then you have increased your chance of making a great song tenfold, 50-fold. Then you've greatly increased your chance of creating something worthwhile. Create some limits. These limits are your friend. You don't want every option in the world. That's too many options. Sometimes that's the selling point of software is that it, you can do anything, but that can be hugely confining in itself. I can do anything? Well, then this probably isn't the thing I should do. Then I, I should try everything before I commit to this. And if that's what you're doing, then it's gonna take you ages to finish a song. And I'd be surprised if you're not really sick of it by then. When starting a new track, give yourself the best chance to finish it by giving it a title, coming up with the tempo, coming up with the key and the overall vibe of the track in advance. Those are things you can kind of commit to without hearing it and without knowing where you're going still. But that gives you a framework. And within that framework, you can build something that has a beginning, middle, and an end. Hey, I hope that was helpful. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.